So if you want to see how I made this tamarind glazed pork chop by this year's MasterChef champion Brent, keep on watching. Okay, the first thing we need to do is get some suka pinakurat. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it's essentially a spicy vinegar. Now, you can just buy this in a bottle, but I couldn't find it anywhere in the shops. So I'm going to try and uh, make a version of it myself. Add a little help from Google. So in my little mini food processor here, I'm just going to add some uh, chili, garlic and onion and some coconut vinegar. And then we're just going to blend that up until it's nice and smooth. Once you got that all blended up, I'm going to go ahead and add in some fish sauce. As always, correct amounts and ingredients are going to be on the website, traditionalbutnut.com. So once you've got that in, the lid goes back on and we'll just, if I can get the lid on, and we'll just blend this to combine. Once you've got all that mixed in, you're going to transfer it into a jar. Don't worry if it's not completely smooth. By the look of the pictures, it's meant to be a little bit chunky, I think. And also, once you got it in the jar here, we're going to add some more garlic, ginger, chili, and a little bit of uh, onion there. So all that goes in, and we'll just pop the lid on. Yeah, this is probably optional, but, you know, give it a little shake, and your uh, spicy vinegar is ready. So we'll set this aside, they're ready to use it. Okay, now we've got to get the meat ready. Now, with my pork chops, when I go to the butcher to get them, it's in a big primal cut still. So the butcher will actually cut them to order from the big piece. Which means that he uses his little bandsaw there. And sometimes there's a little bit of uh, bone dust when he uh, cuts through it. So I just like to go ahead and give a little bit of a wipe up. Make sure there's no, uh, none of that bone dust still lying around on the meat. So just go ahead and give it a bit of a wipe. Especially focus on the, uh, just around the bones there. Once you've cleaned the full of bone dust, I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to give some seasoning, some salt to both sides of the meat. Just give it a little pat. That's also when you're adding seasoning or any kind of, you know, barbecue rubs to meat or whatever, whatever have you. You don't want to rub the meat after you put it on. You just want to pat it. It uh, puts it into the meat much, much better. Once you've got your meat all seasoned up, you want to go back to your spicy vinegar here. You want to scoop out about a, it's about a quarter cup. And you just want to pour this all over the meat. I'm going to add a little bit more. Just because I think the version that we made mightn't be as strong as the, uh, as the still bought version with the flavour. It's quite warm today where, I, where I'm living in Vienna, like the heart of summer. So I'm just going to put a bit of, bit of cling film over the top and I'm going to stick mine in the fridge to marinate. Alright, so you just want to put some cling film on like that. Now you could just leave this uh, out on the counter. But as I said, it's quite warm, so I'm going to pop it in the fridge. In the recipe, it calls for a teaspoon of porcini powder. I couldn't find that at the store either. So, I bought some dried mushrooms. I think these are stone mushrooms, they're called here. Anyway, just get yourself some dried mushrooms in the little mini food processor here, or a blender. And then we just blend it until it becomes a powder. And you get yourself some mushroom powder. Okay, to make the tamarind ketchup, we need to get a little saucepan on the heat. I'm going to add some tomato and onion. We'll just keep this on a medium heat until the tomato starts to, uh, to break down. The uh, tomatoes and the onion have been on the stove here on a medium heat, just sort of for about five or so minutes. And the tomatoes are just starting to break down. So now we're going to add the rest of the ingredients, which is some water, two tablespoons of tamarind puree, two tablespoons of brown sugar, two tablespoons of our spicy vinegar, a tablespoon of tomato puree. I should have said a tablespoon of tomato paste, but tomato puree also sounds all right. We've got a tablespoon of fish sauce, and we've got a teaspoon of our mushroom powder. So we'll go ahead and get that all mixed up and then we're going to let it simmer away for about 10 minutes. Okay, so I had the tamarind ketchup bubbling away on the stove for about 10 minutes. Now we're just going to blend it with a stick blender until it's nice and smooth. So, change of plan. When I tried to blend this just then, it started spitting everywhere and it's uh, still quite hot. I'm going to transfer it into a little container here with a bit higher sides and we're going to blend it smooth in here because uh, I don't feel like getting burned today. Alrighty, we'll give this a whirl, see if it works a bit better. That worked a little bit better. Once you get all nicely blended up, we're going to pass it through a sieve into a bowl. This works much better with a bigger bowl. Once you get it passed through your sieve, and you're left with all the chunkers and a nice smooth ketchup underneath, I'm going to jump onto the next step. Okay, for the sauce, we need to add some chicken wings to a saucepan. In the recipe, it says to use, uh, you know, six chicken wings, but I had all these chicken wing tips, you know, chilling out in my freezer for a uh, stock that I was going to make one day. So I decided to use them instead. So we're just going to get these in on a medium high heat until they're nicely browned. Once you've got a little bit of browning going on in your, uh, on your wings, you're going to add the onion. And we'll just give this a stir. Now I'm just going to give it a little spray of oil just to help not start to catch and burn on the bottom. So we'll just give it a little spray and we're going to let this cook on that medium high heat for about a couple more minutes and then we'll uh, add the rest of the ingredients. Let, let the onions get a little bit of a head start here. I'm going to add a couple of bay leaves. I'm going to add some dry chili and some ginger. We're also going to add a tablespoon of black peppercorn. 
So we'll get ahead and get that mixed in. And then we'll just cook this up for maybe 20 or 30 seconds until all those spices we put in start to get a little bit fragrant. So it's been about 30 seconds. Now we're gonna add the chicken stock. Okay, so we'll go ahead and give this a stir. Make sure you apply a little bit of pressure just to uh, remove any fond that's built up on the bottom there. So we're gonna bring this up to a simmer and then we're gonna let it reduce by about half. In fact, just simmer away here for, I actually don't really know how long, but it's reduced by half. So now we're gonna pour it through a sieve into this pot. Let's see if I can do this without spilling too much. Straight in we go. So we achieved that with only a little bit of spillage. So now we got it uh, in this pot. We're gonna reduce this by half again. My sauce has been bubbling away and it's been reduced to about half. So now I'm just gonna add in the tamarind ketchup. We'll mix this in so it's nice and uh, incorporated. Once you've stirred in your tamarind puree, we're gonna pass through a sieve into another container. Keep warm. Now we'll set this aside till we're ready to use it. Okay, for the salsa, we're gonna char up some things, including a cucumber, and in the recipe it says white peach, but I couldn't find any of those, so the regular old peach like this will have to do. And also, it says a Lebanese cucumber, couldn't find any of those either, so I just got a regular cucumber, remove the seeds, I've already preheated my grill, so we'll take them out there and get a nice bit of charring on them. I got all my ingredients already chopped up on the board. So, the Vietnamese mint, I looked on Google, and they said, shizo is, Relatively the same thing, or you can substitute it. And that's what they had at the store. So that's what I picked up. We also, the cucumber and the peach that I grilled off on, on my grill. Now my grill's not that great, actually for charring things like super deeply. So I got a little bit on there. It would have liked a little bit more, but hey, what can you do? Also, with the coriander, I always use the coriander stems. I don't know why you would want to pick them off. They're so small and it's a waste in my opinion. So I chopped up the uh, stem in there as well. We'll get all this uh, in the bowl. And then uh, just before we're ready to serve it, we'll toss a bit of lime juice through it. And uh, yeah, your salsa's ready. I just cut up some cabbage here. I cut mine about a, about a finger width. Now I'm gonna get these on the grill until they're nicely charred. So I just pulled my cabbage off, off of the grill. If you had a high heat grill, you would just be able to char this, but it wouldn't cook until tender. But because my grill's not so powerful, I had to leave it on there for a lot longer than just to get this amount of charring. So mine's actually cooked to already tender. So I don't need to do anything else to it. All I'm gonna do now is give it a bit of salt some pepper and squeeze some lemon juice all over it. Now I'm just going to cover this with some cling film until I'm ready to serve it and that way it'll uh, keep it nice and uh, nice and soft. So it's time to cook the chops. Now I've already got my grill preheated and I've just got some of tamarind ketchup in a separate container because I'm going to be using this one to uh, put it on now and to baste it while the uh, steaks are cooking. I'm not going to be taking you out to the grill today because uh, it's quite noisy outside. We got some uh, Things going on outside and it uh, won't be able to be filming too good. So I'm going to cook these on the grill to the nicely charred and cook through and the internal temperature reads 56 degrees. Before I head out though, paint a bit of this uh, tamarind ketchup on one side. So this will be the side that goes first down on the grill. And once we get them down, we'll, uh, we'll give the other side a coat and then we'll baste periodically throughout the cook. So I just finished cooking them and I pulled them off the grill. Before I uh, cut it off the bone and slice it up for serving, I'm just gonna let them chill out here for at least five minutes. So as always, I've been testing, tasting a little bit all through the cook and it's been pretty damn good so far. Dip it in a bit of sauce. Mmm. It's a damn tasty pork chop with that little tamarind glaze on the top. But I better try another piece just to make sure. Mmm. -hmm. Just go on a little bit of the charred cabbage with a little minty salsa on top. So after giving this a little taste, I think with my grill and setup, I can't get enough charring to where it gets hot enough to where I can baste it and then it chars on and gives it that nice, rich, deep flavor. Don't get me wrong, it tastes like a really good pork chop, but with my home setup, I can't achieve the depth of flavor that I think you can get with it in a bachi. But as it stands, it has the basis to be an absolutely cracking dish. I understand why this got 29 out of 30 on the MasterChef Championship.